Good morning. It is 7.19 a.m. on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So I'll go ahead and jump on this and get this out of the way because I'm kind of ready to stop talking about it. But an update as from yesterday is that the so-called Bean Dad has uh, has issued an apology on his website. I'm not going to link to it or anything. You, guys, you can find it if you want to read it. Um, and what I will say, at least, is that um, although it is certainly true that a written apology saying the right things is kind of like the least you can do in that situation, but at least he did that, right? Um, it's a shame that it took feeling like he had to, uh, you know, defend himself mo in a mocking way for a few hours and then panic cancel, his, you know, panic delete his entire Twitter account um, before he got there. But he did get there. And so kind of what I was saying yesterday of like, it would have been nice to just see him reflect on what it was. And, you know, so he says like, okay, well, see, I, there were a lot of details that I left out of the story. Like we were actually snacking on other things all day. She was actually having fun all day. Her mom was right there. It was not a traumatic thing, but explaining that he made a huge mistake thinking it would be funny to play up the story like he was being abusive not realizing a lot of people are actually abusive and he didn't want to make it seem like that's funny which is exactly what he did so yeah so I'm not gonna like keep harping on it because essentially he did what I felt like I wanted him to do um, so good on that but I, what I will say too though is that I certainly wouldn't say that means that anyone else has to feel like they forgive him or anything like that. I mean, it's like I said, you know, it's, it's one of those things like an apology doesn't mean that like, you know, like if you hurt someone and then you say you're sorry, that doesn't reset you to zero, right? Like that doesn't, that doesn't just fix it. And then you proceed as though nothing happened, right? So, uh, and, and also, I think it's certainly true that there's been enough of these high-profile apologies now that there's kind of like, it's, it's theoretically possible to do one cynically. Like, you know, like theoretically, you, if, if someone wasn't really sorry, but they said, okay, well, here's the things to say to get all those people on Twitter to shut up, right? Now, theoretically, you know, sometimes those are called like faux apologies. And, and the thing is, it's like, it's true. It's impossible to know for sure um, what's really in his heart. But I don't know. I mean, at least for me, I read that apology and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, he at least said the right things. That is not sufficient to wipe away the transgression, but it's better than not doing that. And so, yeah. So I think probably, unless there are other major developments, which I have a hard time imagining what those would be, I'm ready to stop talking about it. Um, but yeah, so just uh, figured since I talked about it for two days already, I might as well end up on that. Um, I, what I guess maybe I will coda this with is the idea that, you know, I did talk yesterday about the idea that you know, like internet pylons and everything. But like this is such a nuanced issue because at the same, so like when I imagine internet pylons in, in a way that I, like I'm dismayed by, I, I'm tending to think about this in the context of people who are not like big celebrities or important, powerful people. Um, I'm thinking of them more along the lines of like, you know, someone who, uh, you know, uh, it's possible for someone's tweet to go viral when that person is not actually ha have the power to do anything or I, I, okay. This is, this is a very complicated issue. And so I'm struggling to say what I really want to say about it, which 
is mostly just to say that it is complicated because at the same time that I think it is possible for Twitter to kind of just become a mob um, and, and unhelpfully pile on to people where someone makes a mistake and then gets to hear from 10,000 people all saying exactly the same thing that they made a mistake and some of those people saying it in an extremely mean way that might even include death threats or worse or well I don't know death threats are worse than but uh, that's but uh, so I can think that's not great but I can also say that so-called cancel culture is not really a thing either because even though there's an element where an individual Twitter user has no real power, but lots of them all together do create a cumulative effect. But it's also true that a lot of the so-called canceled people are doing just fine. Um, you know, what they think should happen is that uh, they keep a low profile for a couple months and then go back to normal and without really actually changing anything and privately complaining about the whole process. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's messy and kind of gross, but it's just one of the, you know, I mean, it's, it all kind of just comes down to human nature, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm certainly no authority on any of this. But I guess I can just sort of see, and, and I'm not like both sides in it, because um, like, I'm glad that this guy's apology acknowledges that what he did was not great. Like, even if we want, like, even if we can take at face value his presentation now that the story was not as he described it and that it was actually a fine thing that happened, that he chose to write in this way because he thought it was funny. Like, that's still not great. But he said he's acknowledging it. Like, he's saying the right things about it. He's not saying it's actually not bad like you said, so you should all shut up. He, what he's saying is it's not bad like you said, but I realize now that uh, pretending that writing it that way was, uh, you know, like acting like that's a joke and that everyone should always get it and that it can't hurt anybody. That was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And obviously he also talks about what, you know, like the past tweets where, um, you know, it's kind of like I said before, which is to say that like, it seemed clear they were jokes, which does not make them good or okay. It makes them shitty, edgy humor, shock humor jokes, which don't age well at all. Probably not actually that funny at the time, but uh, I think a lot of people who grew up in a certain school of that humor where it's, um, you know, it's like when you're surrounded with people who know you well enough to know the contrast between the shocky joke, you, shock, you know, shocking, edgy joke you just made and what you actually believe in, that's one thing. But then when you put it on Twitter, like, lots of people don't know you. And all they see is the hurtful, hateful stuff. So that's why, even if it's a joke, it's a bad joke to make and you shouldn't make it. You shouldn't do that. Um, anyway, I don't know. Gosh. Sure is easy to have a lot of strong opinions on the internet. And the world is actually pretty complicated. But, uh, yeah. I'll leave it there for now, I guess. And I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.